start the recording. All right, so uh, let me see if I can do this. Um, welcome, everybody. I think we've probably got, got the number we're going to get. Maybe a few more people will pop in, but uh, I am honored and excited to be introducing our, our co-presenters here. Um, I'll start with Chris, just because that's the first one I've got up. So Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're from Portland, though I've never seen you in any Portlandia episodes. Um, <laughs> I live in Portland, not from oh, Portland, but I live in Portland. Uh, I see. You live in Portland uh, and you're, you're, the, you're kind of in charge of facilitating professional development of the Beaverton School District in Beaverton. Is that correct? Yep. And the campus admin for the district. Nice. That's awesome. And then <laughs> Brad is joining us from Stillwell, Kansas, I think. It's, uh, uh, you are the Kansas City. That's amazing. You are the director of blended learning for the Blue Valley School District. And both of you are extremely well versed in Canvas and are uh, going to share us some rad tools this morning um, in Canvas. And so I'm excited to hand over the reins to you guys. And Erin from Canvas is here as well. I'm sure she's going to be interrupting these gentlemen regularly with her own input. Um, but as, yeah, always. We're, as always. Uh, I'll hand it over. Thanks on behalf of everybody and the entire conference committee. We're excited to be learning with you this morning. So over to you guys. Awesome. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the handoff. And Aaron, you are, as always, welcome to, uh, to stop us any, any time. And uh, thanks for you all uh, kicking into the, uh, to the Nearpod while we wait. Um, uh, it's actually, you know, one way, especially if you're, if you're teaching digitally or, or virtual or distance learning like we had this year, uh, we found that doing a bell, bell ringer type activity, um, um, doing a bell ringer type activity like that was a great way to kind of start class, let, let every, all the students get in, get acclimated before you, before you, you power up. So yeah, uh, happy to be with you and uh, uh, coming to you live from my, my office. Uh, it's a little gloomy here right now. Uh, we just hit 55 and it's a chilly 55, uh, and, uh, but I'm sure a little chillier up, no, up north, right? Um, I am the director of blended learning and, and I actually am the Canvas admin as well. Um, and happy to share with you uh, some rad things that Chris and I have found very uh, helpful and successful in our, in our districts. Um, as I look over this Nearpod draw it activity, I see many of you have circled a lot uh, of Google and Zoom in yellow. YouTube, Google, and Zoom, those are some yellow circles, um, which are telling me that those are, those are uh, integrations or tools that you're currently using in your district. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of green ones. And so what that may mean is, uh, yeah, I got a question mark on one of those. What that may mean is we, we, we're going to introduce you to a lot of different apps software, web tools that you might find valuable uh, in using in your classes with your students, but also how we've integrated those with Canvas. So, uh, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, and dive in. Um, as we get started, let's do a brief, like what the heck is an LTI? And then we'll talk about why, why they're so rad. And then we'll show you some of the stuff that we have. Now, all these links to this presentation are available at the, the last slide of our Nearpod, it's there. It's also listed in the, uh, in the, in the um, sketched uh, notes. So, uh, so what the heck is an LTI? I almost should do like cold call. We almost should like put one of you on the spot and I could be like, all right, Dave uh, or Glenda, I might just have to put you on the spot and be like, what is an LTI? Uh, I, I'm not gonna do that, uh, but I just trying to get your attention there. Here's, here's my best way to describe an LTI. It stands for Large Turtle Index. Uh, Dave, well done. Uh, actually, uh, it stands for Learning Tool Interoperability. Basically, there's a, a, a consortium out there called IMS Global that, that basically oversees learning or standards for all of these ed tech tools. And, um, and uh, within those standards, they basically have codes that allow, you know, different APIs. You can script or code up your program uh, using those APIs to be able to talk to each other and pass data back and forth, basically interact in a more seamless way. Now, guys, in Kansas City, there's a Legoland 
And if you haven't ever been to a Lego land, it's like this crazy, it's a land of Legos where uh, there's a ton of hands-on activities for kids and they just explore and, and dive into all things Lego. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 40 now. A couple of years ago, uh, my mind was blown. And the picture you have on here, th th this is legit. You can take a Duplo Lego, which is the big little kitty ones, and you can put a standard Lego on top of it. It'll blow your mind. They interact together. So um, the new creations that we can make, that, it's crazy. The other thing is you can take that standard Lego and put it on the bottom and it also plugs into the bottom. Mind blown, mind blown. So End, uh, yeah. endless towers, I think is the key on that one. Endless towers. You can build those castles with the Duplo wall as you know, guarding the moat and then use your li little one. It just, it, so it blew my mind and, and my kids were like, well, yeah, dad, like, duh. And I'm just like, well, it took me 35 years before I realized that that was even possible. Um, and so in, in a way, uh, Canvas uh, allows for these LTIs to connect to it and build these bigger and better and more creative uh, learning spaces thank, thanks to this LTI process. And so, um, and so tools, there's different standards. Right now we're on, I think, 1.3. Three, LTI 1.3, I think is the most recent, and they'll continue to evolve the learning standards. So the basic process to do this is you get a learning tool, you know, Edpuzzle or, or uh, Newzella or Turnitin, whatever. You have a learning tool and you want to plug it into a learning system like Canvas. And so you do that by first getting a key and secret. And this key and secret is what basically is like the handshake between the learning tool and, the, and Canvas uh, or the LMS. You then go into Canvas, you click add app, and then you paste that key and secret into Canvas and voila, these things talk together. So let me show you that. Here's the back end of Canvas. This is my live instance of Canvas. You can see in the settings of Canvas for uh, an admin, um, there's a little app page and you can already see hundreds of apps that are already like pre-packaged up with the LTI ready to go. So I'm just scrolling through these. I don't wanna to go too fast, but we're not gonna spend a lot of time on all of these. We've selected several that we're using in our districts that, that make this stuff rad. But you know, if I wanted Edpuzzle and I wanted to add this as a learning tool via the LTI connector, I can click on it, say add app. And then right here, I just paste the consumer key and secret that you get from you know the, each vendor and you plug those things together. It's like hooking those Legos up and bam. Just to, just to mention, there's a couple Canadian um, LTI, Canadian tools that aren't uh, listed in this, but uh, including SAJAC, StudyForge, we have an LTI, Content Connections. Um, there's, there's a few others. I'm, uh, Badger Canada is another one. So there are uh, several existing Canadian LTIs and always more on the way. So, so to that point, Aaron, Here's what we've had to do with some of our LTIs, because not all the LTIs are listed there. Mm -hmm. So with, with some of these LTIs, um, what, you, what you can do is just hit the little add app button and you can actually manually uh, or, or, or add via an XML code um, or, or add via a URL that maybe the vendor has per, that, that will provide to you. So in, in several instances, we, this is how we uh, also add LTIs to Canvas. And that's it, guys. So once once you've added it into your instance, um, and then they show up as you know ad, ad, uh, added LTIs in your instance. And now any course inside your uh, sub account that has this LTI added to it now can you can leverage the power of the of that tool. So that that's sort of the 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 gist there. Are there any questions, Chris? I, I see the chat's kind of we got a couple things going on there. Um, I, I think maybe one question that Ooh, maybe has uh, asked and yeah, Sabrina has a great question. And I mm. think um, Sabrina is asking, hey, if I'm not an admin, can I add a, an application or a tool in Canvas myself? Um, and, and Brad and I probably have a very similar setup in our school district. If there's an app that you want to add that it's hopefully free, but if you're paying for it, uh, teachers can go ahead and add that to their Canvas course and it's visible to their students. Where things get complicated especially here in Oregon, um, did that application pass a student privacy agreement? 
um, that's part of our issue is we have to make sure that all those things pass at a student agreement possibly, uh, because we don't want that app to ask for permission in Drive or whatever else. Uh, and then typically, um, how is it going to be counted or rostered or how are students going to have accounts? So we'll talk about Flipgrid in a few minutes. And that Flipgrid is a perfect example of a teacher adding an app to their course versus Brad and I add, adding it to the entire district. So good yeah, example. That, that's a great, and what I pulled up here, if you watch me, is I pulled up my demo Canvas course. And you can see in my demo course, I can come in and only add that LTI specifically to this course. The first example we have, which is Flipgrid, is, is one example of where you would do that. You would come into your course and Flipgrid right here is added at the course level. So you have sub account added uh, apps, which would then trickle down to any course inside of that sub account. And that's great for large school districts like, like Beaverton, uh, 45,000 kiddos. In my school district, we have 23,000 kiddos. So we can manage these apps at a, at a, at a you know, management level that's sustainable. Or we have apps that teachers themselves can just go in and take a few moments and plug that app in and, and away they go. So. Uh, so great question, great point. Um, that is where the, these things get added. So when you install an app, uh, this is what we this is what we actually just covered. So I, I covered this guy live installing those apps. Um, and so, so today, yeah, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, and so the reason why we talk about this, and Brad and I get super excited about adding LTI or apps, is because the student experience is, is changing. And you know, Brad and I are two different states, and up in Canada, we all probably felt the same situation, which is our students are learning from home that means their environment has changed. Well, what hasn't changed, in my opinion, is the need for an LMS, the need to be able to use those systems to help with accounts and passwords. Well, that's why when we say things like the student experiencing experience is, is, is changing because our goal is to add these applications into Canvas, but then the big thing behind the LTIs is one account. I don't have to have a student who has to have a different account for each one of these applications that we that we offer or that we add to Canvas. And so, in my opinion, not only does this change the student experience, but it also enhances the student experience. They don't have to remember all the passwords to all these applications. And that's where Brad had mentioned earlier, the handshake. You know, those that key and secret allows for students to not have to remember, oh, Flipgrid, what was the password? So Student experience is changing, but because of Canvas and the integration, it's actually enhanced. And I think our engagement is actually also increasing. So, all right, where are we at Flipgrid? I think it's you, my friend. Yeah, let's dive into to the, the first one. So, so Flipgrid, we're gonna basically share a couple why, why we think this tool is rad. We're not really gonna unpack Flipgrid because Flipgrid is rad in, in and of itself, but just why is it rad and why would you wanna leverage it inside of Canvas? So it's got a super simple setup um, for, for Flipgrid. Again, you're just opening up a, a, your, your Flipgrid integration. Once you've integrated it to Canvas, um, uh, uh, it, it's really a copy and paste from F Flipgrid over into Canvas. When you, uh, when you use Flipgrid inside of Canvas, it auto creates a new grid for that course. So every course gets its own grid. And then every time you make an assignment where you're going to make a Canvas assignment that is powered by a Flipgrid uh, by, by Flipgrid um, um, board, uh, that is all curated for you inside of SpeedGrader, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, so for you to be able to go in to SpeedGrader in Canvas, that's SpeedGrader saves you, saves you and teachers time. And so um, that, that's the power in it is the SpeedGrader connector is just huge. Uh, and then of course it saves time for, for feedback for teachers. If you go to Flipgrid normally, right? You're going to have all your students in there and you kind of have to like hunt and peck for well, which kid and it's not alphabetized. And, but if you go into speed grader, you got that by sections, you got it by, you can sort it by alpha alphabet, or you can sort it by um, submission status. And so you can, you know, only, only see those who had submitted first. Like it's, it's super phenomenal and seamless. So here's a quick uh, Im image of what it looks like once it's embedded you can see uh, this is a Canvas assignment. It's got the Canvas due date and the points. Uh, it's set up as an external tool, but notice it lives right inside the page. And in fact, this assignment is in a can inside of a Canvas module. Modules are basically like units or week weekly uh, schedule of activities and assignments. So once uh, Carrie's done submitting this, she clicked the red button, she recorded her Flipgrid and done. She can hit next and go next to the next activity for that for that week. So the power of Canvas, the power of Flipgrid, 
bam, smashed together, saved you time. I love it. I love Flipgrid. Any questions on that? Any any thoughts, comments? Any maybe any users have have used Flipgrid and you want to just give a shout out there? I'm looking at it right now. Part of my concern, Melissa, let's just say using new tools is always how to manage all the feedback, et cetera. Yeah, I, Melissa, I agree. We're going to throw at you some tools that we've embraced, but it wasn't like this year we embraced all these. We've embraced these tools over the years, right? So I would say we might share seven rad ideas. Maybe consider one that you take back and say, you know what, this year, this, this, this semester, I'm going to choose to incorporate this two or three times for my activities to try and level it up. And then next semester, add another one. And now you have two rad tools that are, don't bite the whole thing off at once. So great comment there. All right, Chris, I don't see any Flipgrid one. Let's go to, let's, 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 let's ride. Do it. <clears throat> All right. So we video, um, we're, we're a school district of mostly Chromebooks. So we don't have a, a built-in video editing processor or video editing um, um, software on our Chromebooks. So WeVideo is the answer for our school district. Uh, in our school district, we've purchased 5,000 licenses. Uh, and then I manage WeVideo like a library. So I go into WeVideo every week or every two weeks. Uh, and I just basically take anybody who hasn't been active in WeVideo for a few weeks and I convert them to a free account. And then anybody else who logs in who needs the pro version of WeVideo, green screens, uh, collaborative, real-time collaboration, all the other features that come with the pro license, they can get it. Uh, and when they're converted to free, they don't lose their stuff. They just log back in. And if there's availability over those 5,000 licenses that we have, they just jump in and they can use it. Uh, and again, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, Brad, the reason why, just like Flipgrid, the reason why we love WeVideo is because a couple of things. One, no accounts. Students never have to have an account. They log into Canvas. They click literally WeVideo on the left-hand side. It opens up WeVideo in Canvas. They can go to WeVideo, and that is not a problem. They log in with Google. Um, but then the other reason why I love WeVideo is because when I create an assignment in Canvas with a due date, shows up my kid's calendar or my student's calendar, then they can do the work in WeVideo and they literally hit push publish to Canvas. And that assignment, whatever they did in WeVideo, uh, podcast or whatever assignment was, comes to me in Canvas automatically. And then back to SpeedGrader, I can go into SpeedGrader, I can give feedback on that student's video production um, project they turned in. I uh, have it in my grade book and I can give scores and feedback. So again, the reason why we love these LTIs is not just because it's easier, but because it's more, it's easier and it's more efficient. We don't have to spend time searching who turned it in, who did not. So and that's basically, like, I mean, we're going to just talk about these tools pretty quickly. So we can go on. We have a question. If yeah. you have a question about WeVideo, this is where you, you can ask any questions or any comments. Aaron, I don't know if WeVideo is a tool that's used in Canada or has accessibility. Um, I know that's one of our barriers. Like we can't get across the border by physically walking, but I know some tools can't actually go into Canada either. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure that we video is an approved resource or not, um, but definitely something to look into. If yeah, students don't have to, if, if there's no student data being exchanged or pass back data, then uh, potentially it is, but don't take my word on that. Yeah, to... no, check it out with your district. And I met yeah. the, the CEO, the guy who actually came up with B-Video and he is a Swedish lumberjack. He's about six foot three, super, super cool guy. Uh, but the first time I met him, I long hair, I just thought, who is this guy? But anyways, B-Video, great tool. Again, you can use a free version, but if you want that full integrated approach to Canada, I mean, to Canada, to Canvas in Canvas, sorry, uh, we have to use a pro version. And so that's when we talk about some of these tools that are not free. We video in Canvas in that experience that we want our students to have is a paid version. So uh, it comes with a Swedish lumberjack. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you, Aaron. I, I was trying <laughs> to figure out how do I smash Swedish lumberjacks and now entrance into Canada. Beautiful. Video, like. <laughs> Hey, uh, we, we actually have a district-wide license. We paid for one for our whole district. And, and the power in we video is collaborative video editing at the same time. It's like iMovie, but you have multiple people working on a timeline. Pre pretty phenomenal. Um, all right, we video, any questions, comments on that integration? Let's go ahead and check out Badger. So again, Aaron mentioned Badger uh, the, the, uh, uh, in Canada. So this one, uh, you know, is one that you have available. 
Uh, Badger has uh, free accounts and then they have a whole, like every most tools, right? There's sort of this free version and then you could pay for premium access or elevated access. So uh, we love Badger because we, we, we've been able to leverage the free uh, side of things. Um, and it, what it does is it does digital badging. And so um, what's cool in the integration is when you add this to Canvas, it then allows teachers to enable Badger in their course. And then based upon module completion requirements, it will automatically award those badges to those students. So that's phenomenal, like management for teachers that are trying to do digital badging, take advantage of the gamification and the power that in the engagement that it brings, um, but also have some automation take, taking place. So, uh, so here's an example what it looks like. This is actually from one of our professional learning courses for, from this year. Um, I have an older one that I wanted to show, but I, I, I thought this was more relevant. Again, we're inside of Canvas, so there's, there's a little badges button once you've installed the LTI. Um, and then right inside this window, this is all Badger here now, just iframed in. Um, I have different modules. These are the names of our modules. And then we designed um, a badge using like Canva or any other you know, graphic creator. And then we uploaded that right here in this button. So you click the little button, you upload your image. What's cool is it's not just an image. This is a legit digital badge. The difference in a digital badge and an image is there's metadata associated with that graphic that is linked to evidence of um, uh, for that badge, for the completion of that badge. And so you can see here, this is where we control um, this module based on the module complete status, which is run through Canvas. Um, this badge will be automatically uh, uh, awarded to those uh, in the class. And then an instructor can view progress based on badge completion. Um, if they want, they can also enable a leaderboard, which uh, um, you don't have to turn this on, but there's a little uh, en enable there. And then that allows participants to kind of see a leaderboard. It keeps their names anonymous. Um, and uh, it, so it's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty all encompassing badge system for, uh, for a course. And these badges then can be uh, are, are saved to uh, like a Badger profile that that can be shared out uh, with the masses. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of all things Badgerish. Uh, I feel like you you just talked about it, and I was doing something else, so I sincerely apologize <clears throat> if you did, and taking up everybody's time. But okay. can these badges be used as release conditions as well, so that you can like you can make them prerequisites before other modules release? Yeah, and that's actually, um, so you would do that through the course and you would do that within the module structure. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go crazy here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go live. I know that's <laughs> not always the best thing to do. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> here's where I snagged that screenshot. So you can see based on module completion. So when you're in a, a, a Canvas and you're in the modules, so you can see here that this module here this Canvas Kong module, by the way, these are all based off of, we themed it off of old school video games. If you couldn't tell, this was helping teachers learn Canvas, but we themed it up. So you can see there's different uh, uh, requirements here. The one thing that they have to do in this module is submit this, uh, um, this activity. And uh, with Canvas, you control what the requirements will be right here. And so um, again, you control that and you also control if there's prerequisites. So um, by, by you know, adjusting these things, you have prerequisites, modules that they have to complete that are before they can complete this module. And then this gets completed based on these requirements. Uh, and then once that's all done, yep, it's auto awarded, auto assigned, um, pretty slick. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I love it, Thomas. We've used it in several professional learning uh, instances now. Uh, and it's worked out well. Um, funny enough, both of our instances have been video game themed, right? One was Super <laughs> Mario and one was uh, old school arcade. So, Brad, I'll question? just stop you for a second. When you um, when you say pretty neat, you have to add an A on the end of it. Pretty just so neat, we a. understand what you're saying. Thanks. I, I yeah, appreciate that's very it. very true. I, that's totally true. Yeah. My, my, I was born and raised in California, so I get a little bit of California-esque in me. Now I'm, I'm a Midwesterner. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. still in California, looking at Kansas City. Uh, it's 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 pretty good, eh? Yeah, it's pretty good, eh? Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my friend, we have Adobe Spark. So, and again, I'm <laughs> default to Aaron because these are the tools we use in the US. Um, you know, I'm quite sure if Adobe Spark is accessible in Canada, but the beauty about Adobe Spark, I mean, there's a lot of beauty, but if you're not familiar, Adobe Spark um, allows students to create incredible artwork through pages. They can create their own quote web page or even video. Uh, Adobe Spark has stock images, videos and stuff inside of it. So it, it's kind of like Canva where it's done for graphics design and it makes things really nice and slick. And the other great thing about Adobe Spark is it's free, at least here in the US. Um, any school, any public school can apply and get the pro version of basically Adobe Spark implemented. And then it comes with two gigs, I think, of storage uh, per student, which, you know, it's pretty small, I think, because our students are doing we video work and not so much Adobe Spark video production. But again, a great production, a great tool to use. And then, Brad, if you want to go to the next slide for me. Um, yep. Again, the beauty, going back to the same thing, the theme is the same. Our, our goal is integration, no separate passwords, no separate accounts. Uh, we do roster through our Google OU. So some people have, are asking, like, are have maybe questioning, like, hey, how do you keep track of who has access? Well, we use Google OU for a lot of these applications, and Adobe Spark is one of them. Same with WeVideo for us a few minutes ago. Um, but again, I can create a Canvas assignment in Canvas, puts a due date on it, make students aware of when it is and what it is, shows up in their calendar. A student can click on it and be taken into Adobe Spark to work on the assignment. I can even use a template if I want to and give all my students a template of Adobe Spark. Uh, like, you know, one, I want them to turn in the exact same copy. Um, but then the beauty again is I can click publish as a student and I can publish to Canvas. Now, what it's really doing is it's submitting the live URL so when Canvas, when you create a Canvas assignment, students can submit a URL or a website. It's kind of doing the same thing. It's just taking a step away from the students. They don't have to go and copy. They can just literally hit publish to Canvas. Their course will show up. They choose their course and they choose the assignment and submits. And then again, the theme is very similar. As a teacher, I can go to we or I can go to um, SpeedGrader, find my students, sort my students, give feedback to my students, and know exactly who turned it in, who did not turn it in. So again. Handshake, efficiency, we want teachers to be able to use it because it's a great tool. And in our district, uh, we have a full entire count for the entire 42,000 students and staff. Actually, we have like 45,000 students and staff who are using it. So um, any questions about Adobe Spark? Thanks for throwing that in there, Brad. And like we mentioned on our slides, which we'll put the link in again, that little button where it says LTI instruction, Brad and I have done the best to make sure that those LTI instructions are on each slide. So if you're like, ooh, I wanna use this. Um, as far as individual teachers, Brad, I don't know if an individual teacher could, I'm not quite sure if Adobe Spark is one of those individual, can I add it to my own course versus the district doing it? So I, that I don't know. <clears throat> so. Yeah, is Adobe, Adobe is one that we do on- District-wide. Um, yeah, di di district-wide. Yeah. Uh, and that's how we've installed it. So I, I don't know if you can do it on an individual teacher basis. and. Hey, Chris, just to give you a heads up, my, I just noticed my, my power has been acting funny. So uh, hopefully I don't lose everyone and uh, can, carry, can carry on. Hopefully. All right, my friend. So get the hamsters running quick. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Are we there? Okay. Um, so this one, I noticed several on the, uh, on the Nearpod. Like, yes, we're rocking uh, Google right now, already using on all in. Guys, I love Google. I can't believe, I don't know how we do work in, in, in real time. Like I haven't sent a, 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 I haven't sent a Word doc version 1.1.96, right? To my friend to have them edit it, send it back to me with version 1.2.9. So, like that, ha that doesn't happen anymore. Thank you, Google. So, so um, now there's some interesting things with Google more recently, um, but Google has an assignments LTI 1.3 that was launched, uh, I don't know, about a year -ish ago, and super simple to set up and integrate. I would recommend if you're doing this with your district, you put it at, or, or institution, put it at the root account, let everyone, all the courses, uh, let it all trickle down so everyone has access. You can easily and quickly embed docs right from a drive 
right into the body of the uh, of a Canvas page. And so I'll show you what that looks like. The other thing is students can submit and find the file located in their drive, or you can do the advanced ninja move, which is basically what uh, similar to what uh, you would do if you were just using Classroom, Google Classroom. You can use the Google Assignments, and then it's Google Classroom, but it's all working inside of Canvas. And again, in terms of helping students not have to feel like they have to sign into 5,000 different accounts and they have to go to you know, 17 different screens, um, integrating these things into Canvas makes that more seamless. Um, so let's look at a couple pictures here. This first one over here um, actually is uh, the screen you would see when you're creating a Google assignment. So what this is gonna do is as a teacher, I'm gonna go ahead and attach a Google document that is a template, and then it's gonna make a copy, an automatic copy for each one of my students. So then they have their own version of that document. So it, it will do that magic and it does it for multiple files. Um, you, you also have the ability to turn on a originality checker um, within Google. And then you have some of your uh, system settings. Uh, and then once you've created that, here's what's really cool is inside of the Google Drive uh, for each one of your students, it creates a folder structure. Now what's rad is there's a folder called assignment. So my drive is the main folder in Google Drive. This uh, LTI through Canvas automatically creates an assignments folder. And in that assignments folder, it automatically creates the name of a course, or the folder with the name of that course and then any Google assignments that are associated with that course will be listed inside of that. So if you have a student, like we have high school students that have, you know, they have eight different courses they're going to, they'll have an assignments folder and then they'll have a folder with the eight different courses and those, any Google LTI assignments will live, will live there. So that's pretty powerful. And then below here, guys, I just took a quick screen snap of uh, what that looks like inside, embedded inside of Can, a Canvas page. So that's if you're doing a simple embed inside of a Canvas page, it just renders it like as if you were going to go get the embed code and, you know, copy and paste the HTML. You don't do any of that. You just click the drop down in, in the rich content editor and you say embed. I want this file and uh, and it makes the file visible for everyone and away you go. So um, so it's pretty neat. It's pretty slick. Uh, we leverage Canvas and modules the structure of modules, the prerequisites, the completing of modules, and then we power that up with, with you know, a Google Classroom act or a Google Assignments activity. So uh, we love it. We use it all the time. Questions? Uh, Dave, when students uh, hand in, Dave asked this, when students hand in a Drive document, does it actually upload a static copy in the LMS or is it a link? This is a good question. So Dave, when, you, when they submit this, this operates like Google Classroom. So what happens is it submits a live, it basically turns the rights, the permission rights, edit rights over to you as the instructor. So you see the edit rights, the live rights. And then when you, uh, uh, you can return it back to them so that they can go and continue to edit. So it operates like Google Classroom uh, would. Now, Ooh, if, a, yeah. if a student were to go to a normal, can let me show you. If a student were to go to a normal Canvas assignment, uh, and Chris, I knew I told you I wouldn't go too deep, but here I am already like trying to go deep. Uh, um, if I go to a, a Canvas assignment and I um, go to submit an assignment, so uh, the the students and, and if many if many of you aren't familiar with ca Canvas, let me just show you real quick. So here's a Canvas assignment. I'm gonna click student view so I can see this assignment as if I were a student. So you'll notice that um, I have this little new attempt button because this student's already submitted this one. So you'll notice when they go to submit, they'll, they'll have several options depending on what they need to or want to submit. And so if they come in here and they dig into their, uh, their Google Drive files, if they were to submit it through, uh, I, I can't do this while I'm masquerading as a student, but if they submit it through this folder, then it may come across as a static uh, uh, um, PDF. But if they do it through the Google uh, external tool, the Google Assignments LTI, then it comes across as a live, live file. 
Um, so yeah, just just consider uh, consider that. Great question. Yeah, Jeremy's got a tidbit though. I want to hear Jeremy's tidbit on that. So Google is actually building into the assignments LTI the ability to choose whether you'll use Google to grade or SpeedGrader to grade. Not something they're working on right now, but there will be an option when you create the Google assignment to say, I want to use Google's tools or I want to use Canvas SpeedGrader. So you'll have either the physical copy um, or you'll have the Google copy. Yeah, and and Brad and I have gone back and forth. We talk about this a lot. I have we have two versions of Google in, in on our instance in, intentionally. We have the original Google LTI, and then there's Google LTI 1.3, the one that Brad was showing. The reason why is I'm in love with the older one, which is going to be essentially sunsetted because the older one is a full integration. I can use SpeedGrader. I can write all over it. Um, so I'm hoping Jeremy just shared that. I'm hoping for love of humanity that Google picks it up and. Because that's the one thing I think is missing from this new LTI integration is when I give feedback as a teacher, it's feedback in Google, not technically in Canvas, and it doesn't go through SpeedGrader. So that's where I'm challenged. And I'm definitely hoping that Jeremy with what you shared is I'm hoping Google and Canvas yeah. will collaborate and get that done earlier than later. So Chris, I, I reiterate that as well. We yeah. we want the power of SpeedGrader. So that is a limitation. And, and I was going to point that out right here. When I'm setting this up in Google, it, it, it has a little bit of a lack for the speed grader option. So it's yeah. nice we're going to have the option. Part of me is like, I would love to see just both, but uh, I know we're not here to basically yeah. try to market what, what feature options we want. <laughs> so we have like um, five minutes. I know we, we have like one more tool to go. Anybody have any questions? Um, we don't want to cut anybody off. Anybody have any questions about Google or the Google integration? Hey, let's do this, Chris. Yeah. Let, let's vote. Here, we got tools, the tools we got left. We yep. got Nearpod, Zoom, Turnitin, Canvas Studio, CK12. Informative. Informative. So we'll do, you, it, whoever's, <laughs> whoever's willing to put it in the chat, which one they want to see. Uh, and, um, unless it's a studio. We'll, we'll give it, we'll give it, uh, we'll give you 30 seconds to vote and whatever we get in the chat that's got the most votes, then we'll do Oh yeah, that. let's do studio. Okay, studio is winning studio so far. Oh. List them again. Studio, <laughs> CK, uh, CK12, uh, Formative, Nearpod, Turn It In, Newzella, Newzella, Studio. It uh, sounds. I see three studios. Should we just uh, do Studio? Let's do Studio because uh, you and I both are massive. Uh, yeah, we love Nearpod. We're both uh, huge fans of Studio. Here we go. Huge fans of Studio. Huge fans. It, uh, this is you, Chris. Or is uh, it I'll me? just. Well, it's you and I, so I'll just share briefly, uh, and then you share. I mean, we love Studio, and is one teachers can put in, uh, uh, take a YouTube video, a plain old boring YouTube video that your kids would watch with no engagement, and put it into Studio, and ask a few questions, and your students can comment on the video as they're watching. You can give them a quiz. You can ask them open-ended questions if you want to do it, and it's a discussion too. It's a powerful tool. Our teachers are also using it as an attendance tool. In other words. I'm doing a short 30 second video of myself in studio. All of my students are supposed to watch the video of me introducing the class. And then I can look at the analytics and see who watched the video and for who, how long. And so I can take a quick attendance instantly. Brad, go for it. Dude, dude, we, so this is an example of the studio. So my students built these rockets right here that, that it's an egg blast instead of an egg drop. We, we hooked them on the front of the two liter bottles PSI up to around 90 and the last <laughs> side of the school. I put a board there to protect the building. Don't worry. Uh, and so they were supposed to protect. Anyways, you submit the video with studio. And what's rad is as a teacher, instructor, uh, peer review, uh, or as a team, they can go in and comment right here. And as you see the little dots like Chris has, so there's, there's commenting directly on the video itself. Think about a world language class and you have a student's learning Spanish, right? And they're trying to pronounce those words. Submitting that through Studio would allow the instructor or better have the peers do a peer review and allow the peers to be able to connect with each other and try to, you know, try to support, connect, uh, share and, and teach and, and develop. And then of course, this is SpeedGrader. So you have the power of all of the viewing, the rubrics, scoring rubrics right here. Uh, and then even below this, there's the other comment tools, the video and audio options. It's so powerful. 
Um, Studio also lets you record a webcam or your screen. So it's not just YouTube videos, it's webcam screen, any other video that you could upload, you could, you could dump that into Studio uh, and, uh, and, and, and go on your way. Um, I saw a release two weeks ago, they added annotation to a video. So instead of making it a quiz questions, you can just have annotations that pauses the video, provides uh, uh, more text and uh, links to resources directly on the video. So that, that's pretty slick. And my last shout out here is, to, I love Studio. Closed captioning of videos. I know this is YouTube and Google's trying to make it easier to have everything in a video form closed caption. It's not there yet, but Studio lets you automatically caption your video. So if you upload a video to Studio, you can hit generate closed caption. It generates it for you. You can preview it, make edits to it, and then you can uh, uh, up, apply that closed caption. And you can do that across, I can't remember, 25 different languages. It's dope. I love it. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. Here's some other screenshots just showing you how, how that works. Oh yeah. When you comment, it's so slick. You're watching a video. If you have students commenting on the video, the video pauses, they type their comment, they hit enter, the video starts again. I know that's little, but for, for kids today that are watching TikTok videos that know how to watch swipe, swipe left, swipe right, that has to be seamless and studios uh, try, trying to do that. Um, screen recording on Chromebooks uh, is nope. available, but it's not, not available studio, it's not. through Studio. Yeah, not through it Studio. It is. It is. It is. Wait, it's wait, new. wait. It is? Because <gasps> oh, yeah, I'm like, that was our biggest issue is it wasn't, it Jeremy. It is. Yes. Yep. They just released it. Um, I want to okay. say it was right before annotation. So it is real, too. What? It's a browser-based tool. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. okay. So we, we, it does webcam yeah. in Studio and Chromebook, but the... The screencasting, we've always had to send them over to screencast o or whatever. Yes. But it is my now notes, there for reels. It I'm, I'm going to go play with it after this meeting. So. Me too. I'm adding it to my notes. <laughs> hey, I, I know question. I know we don't have time for this. I'm going to cram it in there. Guys, Near, Nearpod, you played with it at the beginning. Look at this page. This is dope. This is a Canvas assignment with Nearpod embedded right into the body. Here's what's slick about the LTI. It captures the student's name based on their uh their enrollment in the course so nearpod itself doesn't have any student data uh collected on their end um but it when you integrate with canvas it doesn't let them just randomly put in whatever name they want it uses the name from canvas so they can't change that that's pretty slick and again speed grader you can see their results only it's rad i know we got to stop and i i talked forever so um we we appreciate that and your time and uh yeah, Chris, you, is that it, uh, Aaron? You sound off. How do we close this thing? Well, I'll, I'll help you out with the closing. I just have one, one quick question on uh, studio in terms of editing. Um, if you are recording yourself or your screen and you want to edit it a little bit, I know that you can cut the beginning and the end, but can you cut in the middle as well? Yeah, so when you go to studio and if you were to record one, now th this and Jeremy, maybe you can help me out, but if mm -hmm. I do a screen recording on my uh, in my studio, and save that, I can go to the advanced tools, which is basically like the pro version of Screencast-O-Matic yes. and adjust, adjust videos from the inside. I can move the webcam around after the fact. I can shrink the webcam up or down or even turn it off after I've recorded it. So all of those things can take place after you've captured this, this video inside of the, the, little, the little editor. Jeremy? So maybe I put you on the spot, Jeremy. We can't uh, hear you, Jeremy. I was gonna try to I was gonna try to capture something real quick just so I can show you what the editor looks yeah, like. Yeah, so that's that's way number one, and I didn't tell you this, but um, browser-based editing is also it's. It, I, uh, is it just me or is Jeremy cutting out? Jeremy's cutting, Jeremy's cutting out. out. I know. I don't know. Jeremy, put it in the chat. I'm going to show them this. So here's all your tools inside of a uh, studio. Uh, so I can add, I can insert videos in between my video that I cut. Notice my webcam is up here and I needed it to be shrink, shrunk or, or larger. Um, I can, um, and then, and then insert all this stuff and do all, it, there's a whole, I, awesome. yep. there's a whole slew here. That's um, great. It's a powerful tool. It's powerful. And Jeremy's going to come back to us and tell us what he was. I feel like there was a secret message that he was going to tell us. I know. I know. He browser. has secret messages. <laughs>
Uh, Jeremy good. says, just in case, I... just in, oh, I wasn't sure you cut it out. I was going to speak for you, Jeremy, but I, I can't do a Pennsylvania accent quite like you do, but he was going to say, so you can edit prior to uploading. The team is also working on browser-based editing for right. this year. Wow. Powerful. Exciting. Awesome. All right. Well, I, I will wrap us up here because it is getting close, um, close to that time, or I guess we're over that time. Uh, Brad, Chris, and Jeremy and Aaron as well. Thank you so much for a wonderful session. Um, those LTI tools and many more are incredible and amazing. And a, and a lot of them can be used in Canada and are being used in Canada. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing in the chat, there's some thank yous and uh, um uh, so on behalf of the of the conference committee and the BCDL executive and the entire PSA and, and everybody who's here uh, these, over these two days, we really, really appreciate this. Uh, the, record, the session is recorded. I know that I'll be going back because uh, there's a bunch of stuff I want to see again and, and, and um, bug my admin about. So um, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. I know that there will be a lot of questions probably still ongoing. So people will be reaching out to the four of you probably. Um, but thank you. Thank you very much. And I will leave this room open just for a few more minutes in case there are any other burning questions. Um, and yes, uh, Jeremy just put in the text as well, chat as well that uh, studio is available in Canada. And yes, some of us are using it um, in our courses. And it's a really powerful way to, to build student engagement right into into your content. So um, thanks so much. I'll hand it over to you, Aaron, for any final words. Just thank you um, to Brad and Chris. Uh, it's always rad to work with you and have you here. I'm glad to see your faces. So thank you. And uh, if anyone else has any questions or anything, you can always reach out to me as your K-12 uh, regional director for Canada with Canvas. Always happy to, to lend a hand or suggest a rad tool that might help you out. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. So I'll stop the recording there. And